So today we're building a quick and easy research tool for real estate. And I know what you're thinking, Alex, you did this a few months ago using Respell. Well, today we're taking a look at Perplexity AI and it simplifies the process so much more and the results are basically exactly the same. So without any further ado, let's get started. Oh, by the way, hi, if you're new here, my name is Alex and on this channel, we'll talk about anything and everything low code, AI, Airtable, you name it. We're probably gonna do it or we've done it. I don't know, whatever. Let's get stuck in. Now we're gonna start as usual with a quick demo of the whole system. It's actually quite easy and really there's not much to it. The idea is that I have a property with an address. I check a button, generate web summary, I get like a little status update just so that I know that something's happening behind the scenes and then I get my web summary. Straightforward, right? Now, I've kept the last version of Respell doing the same job. Now, if you recall from that previous video, this was quite an ordeal. We had to have two scenarios and make one for the beginning, one for the end, plus a Respell thing that was like really convoluted. Now, this is a whole new level, but we're going to get to that in a sec. Let's first take a look at how this works. So I'm just going to clear all of this. Now, just like in the last video, we are actually selecting the attributes that we want to query this property against. Like what's the nearest airport to that property? What's the nearest private school? Where's the nearest park and so forth. So we're just going to run this once. Let's go. And we should immediately see something come up, starting up. There we go. And after a few seconds, we should get a response here. And we're going to compare those responses as well. There we go. So first, take a look at how this works in the previous version. We have like question and it's kind of like a little bit weirdly broken out. There's no sign of sources for this. And there's like a little bit of commentary. Here's the research report and so forth. So I've done a little bit of extra work to make the prompt better, but at the same time, now I can also see the sources that support the answer that is given. And as you can see, this is all very, very, very cool. Now, I've actually gone through and checked a lot of this and the responses are very, very accurate. In other words, the King's College Hospital is the closest hospital. The um, supermarket, it is literally the closest thing to that property. So it is generally giving us valid answers, but also it's giving us the sources. Now, although there isn't much to talk about in terms of the database, let's see how this is designed. So in order to do this yourself, your database should really contain a properties table. I'm just giving every single property a name. I don't think you need a seller. That's irrelevant. You need a, an address. You need a trigger field. That's just like a simple checkbox, right? Generate web summary. Looks good. Then we have a web summary status so that we're basically letting the user know that, hey, something's happening, right? The system is working. And then we have the web summary field itself. We also have a web summary requirements table. Again, super straightforward. All we're really doing here is creating a collection of requirements and you don't need to be restricted with how many requirements you actually have. You can have very specific requirements, but I've kept it, you know, very vanilla, nothing crazy. And also we have an apply checkmark field against each and every requirement because you want to have control over which requirements you want to do research on. So. That's it in terms of the DB. Let's dive into the automation and see how that works. All right, so to start things off in terms of the automation, you will need to set up Make. If you haven't got a Make account, there is a link in the description below. Go ahead and set up a Make account. The next thing that you will need to do is create a new scenario, just like I have done, and add a webhook module, a custom webhook module to be precise. As soon as you get it, just make sure that you copy this URL, just press this button, copy address to clipboard. And then the next step is to jump in into automations, create a new automation, just like I have done here with the generate web summary 2.0, just give it a name like I have. And as you know, we like to trigger things and on this channel in terms of our Airtable automations, exactly the same way every single freaking time. And that is by making sure that the record matches conditions, that is our trigger, right? 
And the condition is, of course, table properties generate web summary is checked. And then we run a script, which looks like so. Just copy this whole script, but change this URL that I've got here with the URL that make gives you. So that's a very important point. Now, from there, make sure that you also have your input variable in place, just like I have done here, capital R underscore capital I D. Keep that exactly as is. And then don't forget to map the Airtable record ID value from the blue little crossover here. It's this little field Airtable record ID. Just click on it and make sure that it's mapped. Once you're finished, press finish editing and turn on this automation. That's it in terms of your trigger. Now let's take a look at the rest of the make scenario that does all the heavy lifting. So from there, we have an update a record module, which essentially takes the record ID that we fetch from module number one. So it locates the correct property. And then we are adding this little notification in the web summary status starting up then a bit of a timestamp in GMT so that it's nice and easy to understand for whoever's using this. Now, from there, the next step is to check the web summary requirements table like I have done here and make sure that you have this formula in place. Apply equals one. In other words, I only want the requirements that are applicable to build the list of requirements, so to speak. From there, we also have a text aggregator where I've set it up like so. My row separator is other. The separator is just a simple comma. I'm not grouping by anything. And my text looks like this. Question, space, bundle order position, space, pipe, space. And then the name of that question from the requirements. That's basically it. Super straightforward. Press OK when you're done. Now, the main event, perplexity AI. So what you need to do at this point is create a new perplexity AI chat completion module like I have done here. The model that I'm using is the Llama 3 Sonar Small 32K online. It's good. I've tried a few other ones, but it's the online models that you want because they can see into the internet. I believe that's the, the main use for them. The messages and the prompt engineering that's involved, well, you've got it right in front of you. The first thing that I need to do is I want to make sure that the system understands who it is. It is a real estate agent a savant real estate agent with 30 years of experience in the real estate market. Super straightforward. It could be more dialed in, but you don't have to. Now, from there, we have the property address and the address that we map from module number eight. The list of questions, module 18. The desired formatting of your response. This is me basically telling Perplexity how I want my response to be formatted. As you can see, we've got Question number one, answer, sources, cite your sources and make sure that the links are clickable and they are marked down for me. Basically, I'm giving it a simple example of how I want things to look like. Then I'm giving it a quick mission provided with the property address above the list of related real estate focused questions. There you go. Yada, yada, yada. Get all the answers. If there is an answer like a high crime rate, make sure that there is like a warning emoji. Always cite your sources. Your sources must be delivered in bullet point format. Yeah, that's not really true. I don't have any bullet points above, but anyway, you can keep that in. And also, finally, do not add any conversational language. We just want the answers to the questions, nothing more, nothing less. That's basically it. The user role, of course, is user. And max tokens, I'm not putting any max tokens there. Temperature is 0 0.3. You can play around with this. 0 0.5 will give you more creative results or 0 0.9, let's say. But if you want things to be a little bit more concise and to the point, a 0 0.2, 0 0.3, that's where you need to be. Then we have the rest of it is just basically blank. That's it. Press OK. Now, finally, we have module number 21, which is essentially us taking the response that we've got from complexity and pushing it back into Airtable. Plus, we're also saying that, hey, the process is complete in terms of the web summary. And it all looks kind of like this. I'm just mapping the message content from module 20 into web summary. I'm creating another tag, complete, another timestamp, and that's it. There's nothing else to this. Press OK, make sure that you save the scenario, 
Don't forget to turn it on and you're ready to go. So that's it guys, hopefully you enjoyed this little tutorial. I'm planning to do a lot more with Perplexity. There's so many different other applications to this technology that I can think of that it scares me. So yeah, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments below if you enjoyed this little quick tutorial. If you have other ideas about how we can use Perplexity, let me know down in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. There are so many cool ideas that I can think of that can apply to Perplexity, especially when combined with Heretic. So that's it. Catch you in the next one. Cheers.